Okay, seventh graders. We're gonna learn some new words today. Is it The the terms we're gonna hear talk about today are the terms relation and function. Relation and function. Okay. Relations or a, a relation is a data set. It's a group of numbers. Okay, and um, the numbers they are oftentimes in a chart where one goes with another. A um, a chart like, for example, one inch equals. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, one foot equals twelve inches. Two feet. 24 inches, 3 feet, 36 inches. When those numbers go together, that could be called a relation. It's a set of data. Okay? Maybe you could create a, a set of data by doing a survey. Um, that, that creates a set of data. Okay? Max, you got to pay attention. Right. Um, and when you're doing a survey or you're graphing results, you might uh, graph them or make a chart of them first and then graph them. When you are finding um, the numbers that go together, the first number is called the domain number. So that's another, that's another word you need to highlight in your notes right now. The first set of numbers, the uh, first one is highlighted for you. Your lady. Okay. Now listen, the first set of numbers in a relation is called the domain. A domain is the first set of numbers. The numbers on the left side of a chart. This is called a T chart because it looks like a T. And the second set of numbers is called the range. So there's two types of numbers, domain numbers and range numbers. Okay? Then, all of these, uh, or sometimes, these numbers are called a function, which is a characteristic of the numbers. Okay, when I give you the example of one foot equals 12 inches. Hey, listen, please. One foot equals 12 inches, two feet equals 24 inches, three feet equals 36 inches. That's called a function. In other words, um, for every number for x or every number in the domain, there's a different number for the range. Okay. What's the, how does that number change from domain to range in the example I gave you? 1 to 12, 2 to 24, 3 to 36. How does that number change here? Okay, this isn't going to work, you guys. I gave you the notes so that you can just pay attention to what I'm saying. So I could ask you questions and you can be following along. So... This should make this easier for you, to have the notes in front of you. You don't have to copy anything. But you've got to pay attention, otherwise we're going to go, let's do this a different way. Okay, this has to, this has to work, otherwise we'll do something else. So do you want these? Do you want to use these, or do you just want to write all this yourself? What do you want? I want these. Okay, let's use this then, and let's use this system to... Help you learn. You've got to pay attention. Now, we're talking about this example of feet to inches. One foot is 12 inches. Two feet is 24 inches. Three feet is 36 inches. Now, how do the numbers change? How do they relate to one another? How do they relate to one another? Really? Well, it's like 1 to 2, and then 2 to 4, and 3 to 6. Three, uh, well, oh. 1 to 12, you mean, right? Sure. 
2 to 24. How do you get 12 and 24 from the 1 and the 2? Multiply by, by 12. Correct. Right. You multiply by 12. And every time, every time the number, the domain number, the number of feet change, do the number of inches change? Yes, by a factor of what? By a factor of 12. Does that make sense? The 12? There's 12 inches in one foot. No, I'm giving you this as an example, Ava. Okay. So pay attention and listen. I'm trying to get you to think about the situation. One foot is 12 inches, right? Two feet is 24 inches. And every time the number of feet changes, the number of inches change, right? That's called a function then. Every time the domain or the number of, um, the first number changes, the second number changes. That's called a function if that's the case. Okay? So a function, I'm going to highlight this, for every x value, it has only one y value. In other words, when x changes, y changes. Okay? Now, not every set of data is a function. Feet and inches are, would be an example of a function. Feet and miles. All kinds of measurements. Those are all examples of function relations, they're called. Okay? What's a relation again, Max? Um, it's um, where every x has one y value. No, a relation. Oh, a data set. A data set, a set of numbers, yep. That relate to one another, like feet and inches like miles and feet, like pounds and ounces, okay? Now, there's all kinds, there's an infinite number of types of data sets. One of them, we said you could get a survey, you could do a survey, and you could survey people on how uh, much they study for a history test versus their grade, okay? Now, somebody might um, study for an hour and get an A. Somebody might study for an hour and get a B. Or get a different grade. Alright? So, that one hour, that one hour gives you two different results, doesn't it? In that case, that is not a function when the same number in the domain gives you more than one number in the range. That's an example of something that's not a function. Okay? Uh, can you think of other types of situations that would not be functions? Okay, the amount of sleep and how well you do on a test. Could be, yeah, sleep hours and a test. Somebody might get eight hours of sleep and get an A on a test. Somebody might get eight hours of sleep and get a C on a test. So then the, the number eight in eight hours gives you two different results, right? When that's true, it's not a function. In other words, the grade is not a, a function of the number of hours of sleep that you get. Okay? So that's what these words mean. A relation is a set of data. A function means that every x value, or every first number, or every number in the domain, 
produces a different number in the range. And the domain are the first numbers in a data set. The range are the second numbers in a data set. OK? You with me so far? Yes. All right, good. Open up your book to lesson 8.1. If you have this, uh, the situation we talked about for for sleep, for example, or for studying, if we were to graph uh, a uh, relation like that, this is what it might look like. An hour of studying, and an A, and a B grade, or a 95% and a 90%. Now, if we look at these two points on this graph right here, and highlight this in your notes, okay? And make a little note about this. This is at the, the bottom of the, the right corner. Look here, Max. And then write down one hour, and then write A for one and B for another. And then notice that these two dots are lined up vertically. One is right on top of the other one. Right here, Adam. Please pause it. Nope, we're talking about these, this picture right here in the notes. One dot is lined up right on top of the other one. In other words, the same hour of studying produced two different grades. Okay? Then, um, Notice that I wrote, this is not a function. So highlight that. This is not a function. Because the same hour, one hour of studying, produced two different results. OK? This is an example of something that's not a function. Now, this, um, this line that I drew right there, it's called a vertical line test. That refers to a vertical line test. In other words, when you have a graph in front of you, and you can draw a vertical line through any two points on the graph, that means that that graph is, a not, is, a, is not a function. Anytime you can draw a vertical line through two points, it is... What? It is what? What does it say, Asa? Oh, not a function. It's not a function. Okay? Now, if we go back to our example of, of, inch, of feet and inches, and we drew a graph of that, one, two, three, and 12, 24, 36. That would look like this, wouldn't it? That would look approximately like this, wouldn't it? And then 4 would be for an 8. Not even that right now. And 60 and so on, right? So look at this line, if you drew the line through, through those points. Can you draw a vertical line through any of these points? No. Nope. A vertical line looks like this. And none of the, no two points line up on top of each other. So that's why this is a function. No, I'm just giving you this as an example. This is a function. OK? 
Okay? Because for every x value or every domain value, these are the domain numbers, and these are the range numbers. And for every one of the domain numbers, you get a different number in the range. Okay? Now, let's go to our assignment. Sometimes it just asks you, um, is the relation a function? Okay? So let's do number one together. Look at number one, page 407. What would these, what would, uh, what does this number look like? What would this graph look like? Actually, um, they give us some positive and negative numbers, so we have to draw, we have to draw a, a coordinate plane for this. And so if you were to sketch this, what would it look like? Number one on page 407. You have to be on the right page in order to not be lost. Page 407. Okay, number one. Okay, you were looking at it here. Uh, yes, it does. Here. Oh, okay. There's an example on this page of that chart. Okay. Now, it lists the numbers, and number one, it lists the numbers in a t-chart. The domain numbers are negative 5, negative 2, 2, and 5, right? And then it lists the range of negative 2 and 3. And then it says negative 5 and negative 2 both have that number, and 2 and 5 both have that number. That's what that means, okay? So, where would we put the domain numbers? These are the range numbers. They would go on the horizontal line, the x-axis, okay? So, negative 5 would be over here, Negative 2 would be here, 2 and 5, right? Like on this number line. And negative 2 would be, look like, would go there. And 3 um, would be up a little farther. Would be up here, right? So where would the point negative 5, negative 2 go? Where would that point go? Negative 5, negative 2. Negative 5, negative 2. Yeah, we go right here, right? How about the point negative 2, negative 2? Where would that go? Over negative 2 and negative 2. Okay. And how about 2, 3? Where would that go? In the middle. Yeah. Two and three. And five and three. It'll go above the picture. Yeah. <coughs> now, if we drew this line, it would look like this, wouldn't it? It'd go across and then up and then across. Oh, so it's it is a function, isn't it? None of the points, you couldn't draw a vertical line through any two of these points. Okay. And so this is a function. This is what a function would look like on a graph. Okay? Now, on a chart, a function looks like this because negative 5 only has one value, negative 2 only has one value, 2 only has one value, and 5 only has one value. 
Remember, for every value of x, it only has one value of y. Or for every domain number, there's only one range number. Okay? So this, this is what a chart looks like of a function. Now, let's compare that to this. Number two. Number two as negative four and negative three. And then negative five, negative one, two, and six. And then it points negative four. Oops. Negative four to negative five and negative one. And negative three to two and to six. Okay? So for every number, how many values does negative four have? Does it have only one? No, it has two. So this is not a function, is it? Negative three has two values. So this is not a function. Okay? That's what that means. That's what the word function is referring to. It's referring to a situation. Okay? Specifically to a line on a graph. But it's also can be real life situations, like we talked about. It's a type of graph. Okay? Um, now, what, what I want you to do with the rest of your time is to do 3 through 14. Even. Nope. Three to 14 on page 407. And using the, the types of information, the types of relations that they give you, figure out if those relations are functions, okay?